It's Friday, and I'm a little depressed. My heart is heavy. I got to tell you, this the death of, of Tiller out the in Wichita. The murder, Wich not the, death. The, thank the you. murder. The murder of Tiller out in Wichita, Kansas, where I was born and raised, is just, it devastates me. Now, it's, you told me he had a bulletproof vest on, and he also had a reinforced bottom on his car. He had all kinds of... Like, he was in Afghanistan. Like... Well, it is Afghanistan where we worry about the Iraqis or the, the insurgents coming to, you know, harm us. Look at what's going on in our own country. They're right, the terrorists are right here. They're either in Wichita or they're in the White House. I think they're in Wichita because this is Operation Rescue. Let's call out Operation Rescue okay, thank you. for publishing yes. George Tiller's name on their website and his address. And, and where you could find him. And their new tactic is to go after the doctors that are performing abortions. And all the all the right-wing pundits, Bill O'Reilly picked up on it. He Rush Limbaugh, why can't he die already? So we're going to dedicate this podcast to George Tiller. Yes. And we're not going to keep it completely serious, because I think what we need to do is make abortion less serious. Well... <laughs> not a big How many abortions have you had? Come on, fess up. Three. I've had three, too. <gasps> okay? And you know what? I never admitted to three. I always said two. I say it openly, and people always go, oh. <laughs> Well, I, I just, I thought, God, you'd think you'd learn after the second one, but to do it again? Well, it's because you're really fertile in those years, and you use birth control, and sometimes things don't work out. That's how all of that happens. Yeah, it's not like you make a decision. Sometimes and Sometimes you don't use birth control. Well, that's when you're drinking. At the moment of great passion. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's in, and you're going at it before you realize what's happened. Oops. Oops. <laughs> but now you could take the morning after pill. I mean, think of how that oh. would change. And, like, I had one surgical abortion, and the other two that I had were with the pill. You take an oral pill, you insert a pill, and you have a heavy, heavy period. Like, it's not a big deal. You know well, what I mean? It's not I a big deal. That, you know what I went through back in 1952 or three. I had a kitchen table abortion without any anesthesia. We did an audio podcast about this. I got to tell you, it was so horrendous. It was like no young woman should be put through that that no. horror of you know. We should care about our young woman more. Exactly. We're not just baby machines. It's, it's, thank you. And I I died a thousand deaths on the way to the you know we climbed these rickety stairs and I walk into this this tenement and there is literally a kitchen table in the middle of the room with a light bulb, a naked light bulb shining on the ceiling. And the woman doing the abortion was she, a drinker, and yeah. she was shaking. And her, the, the, the one that brought me there, who was kind of running the... You know, they had to operate like a floating crap game so the cops wouldn't catch them. We're so a step were, away from that. Here we are. We're back, you know, coming full circle. And, I, you know, I have fought this battle once, and I'll fight it again we'll if I have to. We'll fight it again. Okay, we have we no will. problem with that. It's, it's about personal freedom. Yeah, and in Cuba, you just get a menstrual extraction. It's so easy, and you know what? Yeah. When when no that, one dies. When that 80, <laughs> when that eighties book came out, the new view of a woman's body, mm -hmm. it was incredible. They actually, the reason it was on the marketplace for a year and then disappeared is they actually showed you how to do a menstrual extraction with a few little plastic. I feel like tubes. we should republish that, just like we did the myth of the vaginal yes, orgasm. Yes, yes. In other words, you know what, what I mean. What we are having to do now is to go back to the beginning of the seventies and redo feminism all over again. So we're counting on all of you <laughs> to help us yeah. fight the good fight. Yeah, get behind us, friends. 87% of U.S. counties do not have a clinic. There are states where there are no clinics, so you cannot get birth control and the pill and all of these things, and you can't get access to abortion. Yes, it's legal, but we're making it so difficult for women that we're really jeopardizing their lives. Yes, And yes. we're responsible for that. It's legal, but it's not available. How do you like that? It's like sex is legal, but it's barely, it's never available. You know what it reminded me of? It's like when they gave the blacks the right to vote, and then they had to take those voting tests, and no one could pass exactly, the voting exactly. test. Exactly, Now they got driver's license. And but we that. should have the same outrage. And there, it isn't there. And the outrage isn't there. You know? So, do we have to go back and march on the streets again with the banners? I'm ready. Okay. I think we should do Code Pink. Where's Code Code Pink? Code Pink, where are you? <laughs> Maybe we should connect with Code Pink. I think we should. All right, and let's do it. Let's do some. Let's do some acting up. Act out. Act up. Let's do like a Fight Club kind of thing. Let's start our little like you know network of groups. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and we're the waiters. <laughs> we're the women. We're the mothers. We're the wives. We're driving the cars. We got the pussy. Yeah. We got it all. We got the pussy. That's that's what everyone wants. So let's take control. 
Let's be wise. Be wise.